very that, before well, you get started. But, I, but who would it? Who would it? That's a very uh, Sean McDermott shirt. <laughs> Am I wrong? That's right. Just clap them up. I think if we could focus on on doing a lot of the f little things right, fundamentally, uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna just take it one day at a time. There are three phases to the to the uh, to the game: offense, defense, and special teams. However many cliches I can come up with in this in this press conference. We should play Sean McDermott bingo. <laughs> Sean McDermott press conference bingo. That is so great. That would be awesome. This is now now. This is Rick. <laughs> what was happening now, what you're seeing now, is happening now. I'm kind of at a crossroads here with this team. Because last year, the Buffalo Bills, nobody wants to play there. Nobody wants to play in Buffalo. They never win. They never do anything. Right. Now, 10 and 6. Yep. Playoffs. Mm -hmm. Two out of the last three years. For the culture and or the attitude of Buffalo, the signing A.J. Green make Buffalo a place to be. I'm so curious about this because you can't get guys, you can't get guys. Looking at it from the outs from an outsider's perspective, John Brown, who was historically a two, Beasley, who was almost a three, right, or third option. I'm talking about options, right. not yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Second option, third option. Those guys <clears throat> had 92 catches and were successful in the slot. And you know, the, you see a rookie in, in Dawson Knox who was able to have some success. This team, in, in, you know, the Brady retirement, Dolphins are rebuilding, the Jets. Who knows what's going on with Gase? Stop it. That's been the last four years in the AFC East. The Dolphins are trying to figure it out. The Jets are the <laughs> Jets. Brady could retire. That's, a, that's been the last a 38 four years. 38-year-old Brady East. and a 42-year-old Brady are completely different. I'm just saying. My point is this. Looking toward the future, it seems like the East is the Bills to lose. So I disagree with you here. Okay. And, and here's why. I don't think that the signing of A.J. Green earmarks a new generation of free agent football in Buffalo. And I feel like you feel that way. So No, I'm just I'm seeing the public perception of Buffalo. Yeah. Like, they were able to get free agents last year. You have to figure out that going 10-6, and six, having the third highest salary cap, mm -hmm. is will draw some people to you. Yeah, it is. Here, there's a major difference. If you go out and you spend $125 million on an eight-year contract for Amari Cooper, then that's a statement. Oh. I mean, let's talk about the – let's be realistic. That's going to be what he wants. I don't like it either. Mm. That's not That's not. A, that's not something I want a part of. Yeah. You know there's a team that's going to do it. Well, because he is so young. That's why. You can still get a contract and take him into his mid-30s. Yeah, you can take him. Well, he's had injury history, though. And he's not it's a Julio. That's the thing. He's not a Julio. Like, I get that. I put Julio so high because that size and that speed and that type of ability is not seen anymore. You right. see in a lot of these young, shifty guys that are, oh, he's six foot 210. He's mm -hmm. six foot 200. Right. It's like, right. okay. Well, those are big college receivers because they can still get open relatively yeah. quick. Yeah. Right, so the need of receiver has really changed. These big, you know, these big tall wide receivers, a lot of them are being transitioned into tight ends. Unfortunately, right? Yeah, I, or he's a tweener. Mm -hmm. We don't really know where to put him. So then you see a guy. You mean like Vic Beasley? Continue. No, but here's what happens with a tweener. Okay, in college. <clears throat> Sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but I'm saying sometimes, the coach doesn't know where to put the guy. So he doesn't get showcased the way that he should. Mm -hmm. However, a pro scout, seeing the talent and the ability of this kid, who is a tweener, put him in an H-back, put him in the slot, put him anywhere you want, and then three months later, ESPN's doing a documentary on this kid saying, oh, it came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you gotta, you gotta go to the right spot. You definitely gotta go to the right spot. Is that a path that Bean and McDermott want to take? I don't know. It seems like Kroom is your tweener. I mean, if he's even on the team. If he's even on the team. But he didn't acquire a year of uh, – he didn't have an accrued season this year. He's so on IR still, the whole season. Yeah. 
if you're on IR, you don't accrue a season, so you're an you're exclusive rights free agent. That's true. Uh, yep, that's still true. So the Bills have them if they want them. They, they have so many players that are cost effective, mm-hmm. which brings them to their salary cap, which brings right. me then back to AJ Green. If you have Green come in on an affordable deal, two years, two years, fourteen, two years, fifteen, whatever you want. I to keep do. coming back to that number, and that one just the, the one that makes it, sense. It fits. It fits. What do you make last year? Fifteen. Yeah. Okay, we're going to give you two for 15, mm-hmm. 10 for the first year. Mm-hmm. Prove that you can stay healthy and play a right. season. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that all being said, you end up staggering the contracts between his and Beasley's because he may want to go somewhere else in second right. year. Who knows? Um, that, being, that being said, he's a big-name free agent wide receiver that's on the market right now. Does he come into Buffalo? Does that change the perception of Buffalo if it hasn't already been changed yet? I, I struggle with this one a little bit from from positional need alone, right? So I know that the Bills need a big wide receiver, right? Yes. But here's the problem that I see with this is you're going to try and get one in free agency. There are a couple guys who can fit that mold, right? Yes. But, there's the big but, but you also have to deal with their perception of Josh Allen as your quarterback. Is A.J. Green really going to feel that Josh Allen's going to rebuild his career? If I'm A.J. Green, I'm waiting for Seattle to call because I'd rather go play 2 for 10 with Russell Wilson than 2 for 14 and Buffalo uh, with Josh that's Allen. That's what we're getting. That's interesting. It's an interesting thought. I know that Wilson's getting paid a ton of money. Sure is. So I would only get 10 playing with Wilson. Right. I know that if I... I made a home for myself <laughs> this many years in Cincinnati. If I have to go to Buffalo, it's not that far. Yeah, that's true. It's for his family. If, if that's the deal, if he co- if he goes to um, <clears throat> if he goes to Buffalo with Allen, he's a guy that, for the team's sake, he could hold Allen more accountable than the other wide receivers. Yeah, that's not a knock to Brown and Beasley. No, I'm just saying that the talent level and the production of of, of AJ Green would be a bigger voice in the room. I think there's something to be said for, um, you know, do, is there is there a major line in the sand right now between the fans' perspective of the status of the Buffalo Bills versus the players' perspective of the Buffalo Bills? And, and listen, there was just a thing that came out that said Buffalo was the worst place to go to. Yeah, well, okay, who wrote that? The guy from Boston? If this year didn't tell you what happens to the Buffalo Bills when you win. Now, they had hordes of people go everywhere. Mm-hmm. All right? You're revered by this team. Not that you're not revered by other teams, but it just seems so much more that the Buffalo Bills, they, you're, you're, um, you're a deity to mm-hmm. people. If you're a football player in Buffalo, they will ride with you. Okay. Even team, even players that don't that don't play here. Andy Dalton go anywhere he wants and get wings for free. Yeah. Oh, Andy Buffalo. Dalton would eat anywhere for free in Buffalo. Yeah. So uh, that type of atmosphere, I think, is something that has been lacking in Cincinnati for Green. I don't know if because if he goes to Seattle, like you said, two for ten, he might um, he might get that college feel again back in him because that's Maybe. how. Even though that's, that's how Pete Carroll runs the system. Even though Carroll's the oldest, yeah, he's the oldest coach in the NFL. But he isn't he, that crazy, right? He acts like he's seventeen. I don't know. Your stance on this is that the um, the signing of AJ Green marks a new earmarks a new era in Buffalo. I'm just saying the public perception of Buffalo could change if they sign AJ Green because. It seems like to be a big name guy. He's going to Buffalo. Now the way I, I even just said that, yeah, he's going to Buffalo. Right. That's the perception. They're like, hey, wait, wait, wait. They got Beasley and Brown last year. They went ten and six. They made the playoffs. They were a, a second half collapse of going to the divisional round against the Chiefs. Maybe that's the place to be right now. Let me call my agent. You know what I mean? I mean, you can't knock the training facility. No. You know, you can't. Good you Lord. can't knock the training facility. That is. Look at the injuries the Bills had this season, right? Yeah. How much None. of it? Right. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> According well, I mean, to we didn't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but look at you know look at look at the way that they were able to keep their team healthy for a majority of the season. I'm curious how much of that is the focus on that strength and conditioning center that they had built, or the or the horses you got, or the players, man. You, well, you, 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 McDermott and Bean are very specific about the pedigree of the guys that they get. That is true. Okay, even though they have been hurt, we talk about Teron Johnson, we talk about a, a Kevin Johnson, we talk about these guys, but they come back. Mm-hmm. So one one, you're attributing it to the the facility. I'm talking about the actual genetic makeup of some of these guys. I mean, well, you also get when you're signing guys, you get a preview into what their history is like. Like with Nasecki, it's like okay, well, he's got ankle and knee issues, but the, he's he's a he's a plug and play guy. Yeah, he's yeah. a plug and play starter. Um, when they draft guys, they often draft guys who are at least a year removed from a major injury. They don't like to draft guys who miss time their senior season. No. That's a big no-no for them. That's bugaboo. They don't like it. They want – it's bugaboo. They don't like it. They want guys who are at least a year away from, um, you know, having been – having a major injury. They also love guys who are three- and four-year starters. Yeah. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's that's – that if you if you check those boxes, the Bills are going to talk to you because the transition that they have coming to the Bills will be very similar. Right. All right. You're right. used to being preparing to be a starter. You're used to doing this. You're taking care of your body. Frank Gore's here for crying out loud. Right. You talk about the epitome of taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, that all intertwined. I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely a discussion. Do I think that. Does my perception of the Bills change if they sign A.J. Green? No. I would be like, okay, I, I, this, the move makes sense. It does. But the yeah. public perception of Buffalo by other players outside of Buffalo and by the league might change. I'm, sure. that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Okay. All right, I'll go with that. 